Hey guys, what's up? I'm building Chan Man's computer today. He wanted a computer for, I think the budget was something around $2,000. He wanted it to be able to play pretty much any game on any setting at 1080p. And um, he wanted a computer that could stream really well. So that's what we have today. We have an i7 4770K, because Haswell is the newest and the fucking best because it's the newest. Not necessarily, but um, 4770K means i7, means it's got hyper-threading, which means for shit like streaming, it's really good. And it's a K version, so it's unlocked, so we can overclock. And it's a Haswell, so it's new, so the instructions per clock and all that are good, and it'll be awesome for streaming. Um, two 7970s. Um, to be honest, like a single 7970 will kill almost everything at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Two 7970s will pretty much annihilate anything at 1080p. Um, they should be able to run like Metro 2033 Crisis 3 uh, next gen games or whatever at 60 frames per second at least at 1080p for quite a while. Um, this is a pretty monstrous um, this is a pretty monstrous graphics setup. Um, H100i is aftermarket water cooler for the i7 so that we can overclock and keep it nice and cool. Um, we will be delaying the i7 too to keep it even cooler. Um, this cooler, uh, there are other benchmarks that put other coolers, uh, like I can think of the Kraken X60 on the top of my head, that put other coolers like maybe a little bit better or around this one. However, I like the H100i. Um, you can hear my H220 in the background, which is loud and noisy as fuck. This, this H100i is nice and quiet. Um, they seem to be pretty reliable. I've never had trouble, troubles installing any, um, which is cool. So that'll be awesome. We have this motherfucker, which is the UD3H. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I just got this because the uh, Z77 UD3Hs were fucking awesome. So I'm assuming that the Z87 UD3Hs should be awesome too, even though, to be fair, I guess Gigabyte really sucked on uh, Z66, but um, I've, heard, I've heard decent things about these boards, so we should be fine with this. Um, eight gigs of RAM? Eight gigs of RAM or 16 gigs of RAM? I'm not even sure. Oh, 16 gigs of RAM. It's whatever, 1600 megahertz speed. Probably like nine cast. Um, it's, RAM is RAM, I don't give a fuck. I don't care about RAM. And then we've got 1050 power supply by Seasonic. 1050 watts of wonderful, delicious, pure, clean, raw power coming from our wall socket. It'll be awesome. <laughs> All of this is going to be, um, so I, there's a case that I've really kind of fallen in love with that I've liked a lot on builds. It's the Fractal R4, the Fractal Refine, Define, Refinery, I don't know. The Fractal something R4 is a really, really, really nice case. I like it. It's small. Um, it's not huge. It's not gaping and bulking or nasty or stupid. It doesn't have extra stupid shit. It doesn't look tacky like a lot of the cooler master cases do. Um, or speaking of tacky looking cases, <laughs> I like the R4 to a lot. However, this case is pretty cool. Um, this is the Thermaltake Chaser Mark I. I. I actually, like, by luck, I ran into this case because somebody wanted, um, somebody wanted this case for some reason. Um, if you're into, like, the flashy LEDs and shit, then that's cool or whatever. It's got all that stuff. However, um, what I'm interested in is the person that I'm putting this together for really wants to be able to uh, hot swap hard disk drives. And there's actually a really convenient slot at the top where you can literally just pop a hard disk in and then pop it out, which is really cool. And that's the reason why I went with this case for this guy. Um, if you don't, if, like hot swappable hard disk drives aren't like your thing, um, I would probably recommend the R4 because that case is the shit. So. That case is made in a Chinese plastic. I mean, everything is made in Chinese factories. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <sighs> First thing I do in every build. Is delid the processor. Um, I like to do this first because it gets it out of the way and then I don't have to pull all these tools out afterwards and it just makes things easier to have it all done. Um, I can put it back in its case and forget about it until I need to pop the processor into the motherboard.
Um, vice. This vice is going to hold this CPU um, in place. This block of wood is going to rest on top of the IHS, the integrated heat spreader. This hammer whoosh, it's going to knock the IHS off of the PCB, which is a printed circuit board. And that's going to let us play games with our chip, more or less. Um, one step at a time. So people delid processors because it, it's because it's cool. Um, because it's cool? Because it's cold. That was like a pun. I didn't even mean to do that. I'm sorry, that was really lame. <laughs> so, on a processor, you've got three main parts you need to be concerned with. You have, what I'm touching right now, the outside, is the PCB. This is the printed circuit board, okay? That's where all of the, um, it's like the base of the chip, I guess you could say. Um, You've got the PCB. On top, you've got this like metallic thing that you should probably never put your fingers on. I'll clean it later. Um, this little um, metallic thing is actually um, nickel-plated copper, I think. Um, and what this does is, this is called the integrated heat spreader. This attaches to the PCB and sits on top of the die underneath that um, contains like your CPU, that, that actually contains like the processing power of this chip. Um, the problem with Ivy Bridge and Haswell, one of the reasons why you hear a lot of people say shit like, well, Sandy Bridge overclocks so much better than, than Haswell and shit, shitty bridge. Um, the reason why that is true is because on the Ivy Bridge and the Haswell chips, um, instead of soldering this IHS to the die beneath the chip, Intel used a really lame epoxy-based glue to, like, glue down this, um, this IHS, and, and it's not... It's just not good. It's just not good. So what we do is, um, you can kind of see it. I don't want to hold it up to the camera though, because I'm lazy. I'm not going to get up. Um, the idea behind uh, this stuff is we're going to attach the chip to the vise. It's going to grip on to the IHS, the integrated heat spreader. We're going to rest the block of wood on top of the PCB. And then we're going to give it a few good, well-placed whacks with the hammer to separate the PCB from the IHS. We're going to scrape off all of that nasty, disgusting epoxy whatever stuff. And then we are going to coat the top of the computer die with this stuff. Um, it's called Liquid Pro, and it's awesome. It's like a 100% metallic compound super liquid thing that's cool. And it'll give us much better uh, temperatures than if we were to just put the chip in as it is. <clears throat> um, this is glass underneath here, and as much fun as it would be to destroy this table, I'm going to move up onto the kitchen counter here. I'm up to 95, 96 billion cookies on this cookie clicker game. Holy crap, I'm like the cookie master. Two billion to go. All right, sorry. There are two ways to go up the, up, there's, there's two ways to go about delitting, okay? You've got the razor way, also known as the wrong way, and then you've got the hammer way, also known as the master race way to do it. Um, the razor way takes a long time. It's scary. It's annoying. By the time you finish it, you're likely to use the razor to cut your own wrists out of frustration. Um, the, the risk of damaging the chip is high because if you nick the PCB, if you nick the die, if you slide and you slit your fucking whatever artery this is, you can kill yourself. Um, there's just all sorts of bad stuff that happens with the razor. Believe it or not, this is very elegant. This is a very elegant solution to delitting. Um, it's it's much 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 easier. It's much safer. It looks cooler. It feels more manly because you're swinging a hammer. Um, then again, this is pink, so I guess <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not the manliest. Manly enough though. Um, and it's also, it, it's just, it's easier, it's safer, and you've got less of a chance to screw things up. Um, this is going to look really dangerous, but it's so, it's, 
it, it would it would take a lot for me to break this CPU, okay? Like for me to actually mess up and break the CPU, I, I would have to try. I would have to go out of my way to be silly to do it. <clears throat> Okay, so, what do we got here? Sorry, I got my mic stuff in the way. Okay, so the vice is gonna be grabbing the top ridge of this IHS. We've got the PCB underneath that the hammer is gonna be hitting. Zoom in, well, whatever. I think you get the point, right? This vice, you can find way better quality vices. This vice cost me like 20 bucks, I think. 40 bucks, 30 bucks, I don't know. This vice was super cheap. Um, you're gonna make sure this is tight. Don't, you're, you're not gonna, and, and again, this is really scary, but you gotta, you gotta understand, like, this is like a block of copper. Like, you're not gonna break it by tightening this vice. It's not gonna happen. You, you're not gonna destroy the chip. Um, the, the actual fragile part, the scary part, is hidden underneath this IHS. You're, you're, you can't break it, you're not gonna break it. Well, I mean, I guess, don't challenge me on that. If you really want to, you could, I guess. Okay, block of wood is gonna go on this PCB here. I'm gonna give it a few good, you gotta, you just have to man up. You just gotta smack the shit out of it. Not that like men smack things up, I'm not trying to make that kind of insinuation. Um, the, really, the, the only thing that you could mess up by doing this, like, I, yeah, I guess, like, if you, if you slipped, and then, like, you just, like, smashed the chip in that way, or, like, you hit it, like, you, you can't, like, you can't mess this up. You really can't mess it up. This looks really, really scary, but I promise you, you, you just can't. You can't mess it up. Okay, right? Block of wood is there. Hammer is on here. Worst case scenario, the chip falls out because the vice wasn't tight enough. After a few good whacks, check to see if it came loose. If it didn't. Okay, perfect case scenario. After you smack it, chip falls onto it. I like to put a little cloth down, but you really don't need it. Hassle, what the f You loosen the vice. You've got your IHS. You can see that nasty epoxy glue on the outside and the whatever bullshit thermal paste they use here. And then here, you've got your chip. You can definitely see on the outside this black goopy stuff it hampers the IHS's contact with this die, with that die, which is where your actual processor is. Um, and that's what we'll be scraping and cleaning up. We'll go back to our table. Um, one cute thing, actually, there's, this applies to almost nobody watching. This little line of, of what, what would you call those? Transistors? I don't even know what you would call them. But um, I think those are the built-in uh, VRMs from Haswell, the little voltage regulator things that are built into the chip um, that is unique to Haswell. But there you go. Um, I could set up a better camera angle for this, but it would be a lot of work and fuck that shit. I have a beautiful subway card, let's use that. <sighs> a lot of stuff working with computers is scary, but you have to consider the safety factors in place when you work on computer stuff. Um, the average person, not to insult whoever is watching this, um, well, let's think of nicer ways to say it. The average person is not very well versed in technology or hardware or software. So to actually destroy a part takes a lot of work because all of these computer things are made with the idea in mind that the person handling them are going to be completely technologically illiterate. So 
As long as you're careful, you're you're you're, you're, you're fine. As long as you're careful, you're fine. A lot of people get really nervous when they put together computers, and it's, it's nothing to be nervous about, man. So right now what I'm doing is, remember that black goopy junk I showed you on the edge of the chip? Right now what I'm doing is I'm going around the, um, going around the edge of the inside of the IHS, and I'm scraping off all of that gunk. Because when I set this IHS back on my CPU that I have coded with that Liquid Pro, I'm going to want the contact 100% to be from the die to the top of this IHS. I don't want, I don't want the sides to be resting on the PCB, if that makes sense, right? Because I want to maximize contact with the top of the die and the bottom of the top of the IHS. Ugh. All right, there's not much I can do right now. I'll take questions if anybody has questions. Um, two, two things that I get, um, I shouldn't say this, I guess, I don't know. I can be pretty careless sometimes when I work on this stuff because I'm really comfortable with it. Um, two things that I would recommend doing if, if, you, if you really want to be at ease and you really want to make sure um, that you're not breaking something is... Um, I'm going to screw this up with my finger now. Um, I say on the lot. Uh, you could you could assemble your entire system first, and you could test the CPU to make sure that the CPU isn't dead on arrival (DOA). Because if the CPU is dead on arrival, and you do what I just did, and then you go to test it, and you find out it's dead, Intel's not going to replace it for you, unless you can like glue it back on and trick them. I don't even know if that's possible though. Never tried it. Um, for me personally, the reason why I don't is because I know that Intel CPUs are held to very high standards in terms of the uh, quality control, and I've, I've never in my life, to be fair, I've only put together maybe 20 or 30, not 30, well, I don't know, maybe like o over 20 systems, and I've never ran into a dead Intel chip, so it's not something that like worries me, and I guess if I did break something, I would just replace it, although that would kind of suck, but... Um, another thing that you should do, um, that I did before I started this, is you can start assembling the computer. You can put in the power supply, and you can plug the power supply into the wall. As long as the wall socket is grounded, you can touch the power supply and it'll ground you as well. Um, if you're worried about ESD, if you're worried about electrostatic discharge, you can um, ground yourself on a on a uh, on a grounded power supply. That's something that worries you. Some people use um. Jesus, this stuff is harder to get off than it has been on i fives. Um, some people will use these things called anti-static uh, wristbands, which I guess is possible, but um. You don't have to be that scared. Um, I've put together computers in the past, and obviously this is all anecdotal, but like I've put together computers in the past very, very, very sloppily, and I've never had a part get completely fried due to ESD, although it's impossible to measure the damage that could be done. Uh, keep in mind that ESD can damage a component without necessarily destroying it, which is something that a lot of people don't realize. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's just the subway. Maybe subway cards just aren't good for. 
this. Usually this is a lot easier. Um, you can use your fingernails if you want. You can use a plastic credit card. Um, I wouldn't recommend using a razor because a razor, with a razor, you could accidentally slice into the PCB. And if you short anything in there, or if you cut the wrong pathway, it's very possible to completely destroy your chip instantaneously. Um, another reason why I do not like the razor method of delitting, because every single time you take a razor to the PCB, you run the risk of permanently destroying it. Once you've gotten all of the uh, black gunk off, uh, I recommend, or at least what was recommended to me, uh, I've got 91% isopropyl alcohol. Apply that to a microfiber cloth. It has to be, it has to be um, some kind of a cloth that will not leave a residue. Um, you don't want to use like a paper towel or a napkin or a t-shirt. Um, although I guess if you were careful you could, but you probably shouldn't. Because um, you don't want to leave behind any fibers because obviously anything left behind is going to conduct heat worse than the metal itself. So you don't want anything like that uh, sitting on top of anything that you need to transfer heat. By the time you're done, clean this off. Um, you can see it's nice and shiny, right? You can very, very, very easily see the reflection of everything else. Oh, do we have an Aslan face? Uh, there we go. <laughs> you can very easily see the um, reflection of everything on the uh, chip. And then I'll do the same thing on the bottom of the IHS. I'm going to clean that off. This is a um, this is an i7 4770K. That's what this CPU is. really need to clean this rag. You should be using a clean rag. Mine is pretty dirty. I'm also going to go over this one more time with my credit card to make sure I've got all of the black gunk off. Um, ideally, when you set the IHS back on top of the um, on top of the uh, die, this should almost be able to um, spin without um, without interference. But if there if there's too much of that black gunk on, then obviously that's not possible to do. Delitting a Haswell chip, I heard it was more difficult because of the chip's VRM. Not at all. Um, I mean, you can see it on the chip. You just have to be careful not to mess with it as you're scraping off this uh, glue stuff. But no, it shouldn't make it more difficult. I mean, it hasn't been more difficult thus far, has it? I wouldn't say so.
this is nice and pretty. Um, am I gonna glue the IHS back on? Um, hold on, you'll see, what good thing. As far as static electricity, can I just touch metal objects near me as I build the computer? Um, oh god, I, it's been so long since I've been a phys in a physics class. So, you okay? So chat can correct me if I'm wrong. I'll I'll, I'll speak with somebody who says I'm wrong in chat. Um, the the way the problem with touching a random metal object to try to discharge yourself is if you touch an object that's carrying a charge and you touch it, then you all you do is you transfer that charge to yourself. So if I find a big metal object that for whatever reason is carrying a charge and it's impossible to determine unless you have a device for measuring it and I touch it and I go, wow, I'm grounded now because I touched the metal object and then I touch the chip, if that metal thing was carrying a charge and I touch it, now I'm carrying that charge. Even though it feels like, there, even though it feels like I might have discharged or whatever, in reality, I just picked up the charge from that. So then when you go to touch whatever electrical concurrent or electrical conducive conducting device after that, you'll just uh, transfer that charge from the metal object onto that. So um, really all you need to do is, um, or what you need to do is you have to touch something that's been grounded first uh, so that you can be sure that the charge is gone. That's why touching something grounded is so important. <clears throat> metal objects don't just randomly carry charges. I'm pretty sure metal objects could pick up charges, no? As you drag things across the floor, as people interact with objects in the house. You don't think that you think that every single object in a house is as neutral? I guess it's possible, I don't know. Your fridge and everything else is fine. Well, yeah, but your fridge and everything is plugged in. Your fridge and everything is grounded. <clears throat> I mean, I guess you could get away with it. I, to be safe, I would only touch objects that you know are grounded. I, I, maybe you could get away with... If, you're, if you have to ask me that question, then you should only touch things that you know are grounded. <laughs> Let me put it that way. All right. So I shouldn't be wearing woolly socks? Probably not. Again, you could you could probably get away with it, but um You um the the problem with electrostatic discharge is it's hard to tell um if you've actually damaged a component. Because you can damage a component with, elect with static electricity without destroying it. So, I'm going to get a clean one of these. <clears throat> Just because the computer has worked every time you've shocked it doesn't mean that you haven't caused any damage. If that makes any sense. Ugh.
What am I doing right now? I'm rubbing 91% isopropyl alcohol. On this shit. All right. Now I'm gonna be applying this liquid metal pro. I'll rub this one more time. I don't want anything whatsoever on the top of this die. All right. Very, very, um, I guess, don't take my word for this stuff. Um, if you're gonna use this stuff, you need to look it up and read about it beforehand. The amount of stuff that you need to cover the entire dye, very, 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 very small. It's not, this is not like thermal paste or any material you've ever used in your entire life. Um, if you can see how much, it's hard to see, but like I've barely put a drop, I've barely put a drop on that. And that itty bitty drop is enough to cover the entire surface of the top of the die. Um, one thing you have to be careful of again is this material is this is like a 100% like metal metallic alloy, so this will conduct electricity. Whereas some thermal pastes won't conduct electricity or they're not that conducive, this will definitely conduct electricity. So if I were to go ahead and connect all of the VRMs or random parts of this PCB with this material, it would probably short the chip out when I turn the computer on. Um, you have to be very careful when you're using this stuff not to just get it everywhere. Why use the Q-tip? Cotton leaves huge fibers. Um, the cotton won't leave huge fibers because the material that I'm working with isn't sticky. This isn't something that's sticky that's gonna suck the fibers off like maybe like, like, um, like a thermal paste would or even water. Um, this material is just, it's really, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. Do I do this with all chips? Um, all Ivy Bridge and all Haswell chips, yeah. There's absolutely no reason not to do this. It's a little bit scary and it's a little bit extra work. Everybody can do this though. If, if, you've, if you've taken like second grade arts and crafts, then you can do this. Um, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise, I promise. If you're at least like 16 years old, if you're at least 12 years old and you've gone to school and you've done like arts and crafts before, then you can very easily do a little processing. It's not hard, it's not that scary. Uh, well, I guess it's scary if you're a pussy. Okay, so this chip should be good to go. I've delitted it, I've applied the uh, this material between the IHS and the top of the die. So this this chip is good to insert into the uh, motherboard. So I'm gonna set that up here. Um, I don't need this anymore. That goes back in to my toolbox. We'll get a drink. I wonder if I've got money on the subway card still. I need to check that out. <clears throat> All right, now we have a case. I need you to get off. Can you do that for me? Oh yeah? If I pet him, eventually he'll run away.
two best friends are a sharp knife and a screwdriver. I'm gonna figure out where I put my sharp knife. using it to cut open the motherboard box. I don't remember where I put it after that. Oh shoot. I always set something down and then it disappears and it's like right in front of me. And then I hate myself when I find it. I don't feel like this is healthy. Am I getting old? Do you think I'm getting old? Oh, it's... Oh god, it's right here. Oh god, it's right here. Oh, it's just sitting on top of my computer. Holy shit. Holy shit. Um... Okay, when you're putting together anything in your entire life, you should never, ever, 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 ever have to wrestle with anything. If you have to wrestle with something or it takes a lot of effort to do something, that means that you're using the wrong tool. Tools exist to make your life easier, okay? If you're using a screwdriver or a hammer and it's taking a lot of effort or force or you're like machoing out doing something, that means that you're not using the correct tool. Humans invented tools so that they wouldn't have to work as hard, okay? Remember that shit. Um, always keep a sharp knife around to cut shit, right? When you cut, always cut away from you. It's really, really tempting, and it's really easy. This shit is like, um, it's like, it's like, it's like putting your seatbelt on. It's really easy to just like shove a knife in and go, Ugh! or to, or to maybe like to put your hand under here to hold it and then like cut. They're called accidents for a reason. Accidents never happen intentionally. Well, I mean, I guess it will. No, because then it wouldn't be an accident. Um, be safe when you use shit like that. Always cut away from you, et cetera, et cetera. And if whatever you're working on is taking a lot of effort, then you have to choose a different tool. You go into a machine shop, or if you find a blue collar worker, watch how they use tools. The people that you see with hammers that are like smacking away on something, or with screwdrivers that are ugh, like working like super fucking hard or trying to do it, those are people that do not work with tools. <laughs> it, it should be easy. Whatever, whatever you're trying to do with one should always be an easy, easy task. I'm not a big fan, personally, of the way this case looks, and the LEDs are gonna make it look like a 14-year-old's dream. However, um, this is something that I thought was really cool. I worked with one of these on accident, not on accident, but like somebody wanted one, and I never heard of it before. Um, oh, I can't see. This thing right here, 
you look inside, I don't think you can see it, but there, oh yeah, you can. You've got SATA and SATA power. You can actually just pop a hard disk into the top of this. And then, um, yeah. I wanna see Destiny cut down a tree with an ax and say that the tool did all the work. People use power sauce for that, dude. Or giant machines. Nobody goes out into a forest and just cuts a tree down with an ax. Or I guess you could if you wanted to, but. If you only need to cut down a few trees, it makes no sense to buy an expensive power tool for that shit. Awesome. Um, there are places where you can rent power tools. I'm pretty sure if you go to like a Home Depot or something, you should be able to rent a power tool for that. Yeah, and also that has to do with money, not necessarily choosing the right tool for the job. Okay, so actually, here's a question. What is this thing for? I have no idea. Anybody know? Oh, you can't really see it. Hold on. Let me up the camera a bit. What is this thing? Hold your headset? Oh, that's cute. Aww. This case is pretty neat. This is a nifty case. I was really surprised by this case. Um, working with this, oh dude, once I have this thing on, you're the, the LEDs and shit are gonna blow your mind. It's pretty, it's pretty silly. Um, it's definitely a little bit um, insane. Insane, over the top. <clears throat> So the way I like to do things is I will install the power supply before everything else because I like to make connections with the power supply to the parts that I'm putting in before I get everything put in because um, I find that it makes it much easier to route everything rather than putting in the power supply last and then hoping that your power cords fit everywhere. Look, this, um, this case even has the standoffs already in too. How cool is that? And it comes with an extra bay for your SSD drive. <laughs> if you're into that kind of thing. What's up, Aslan? There you go. Um, see, Sonic power supply. Oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest here. I'm pretty lazy when it comes to looking at all these power supplies because it changes so much, and like the power supplies that are good or bad goes in and out. Blah blah blah. Um, you can go. You can look up like the quality of different VRMs and whatnot, or the quality of components and shit on on different drives or not drives, but solid state drives. However, if you get a Seasonic power supply, you are always going to get a really fucking good power supply. You will always, 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 always get a good power supply if you go with Seasonic. Um, there are other times you can go get something cheaper that's just as good, but there are also times you can get something cheaper that sucks. Huh. Um, so just something to keep in mind. 
I don't, I don't, I don't understand where this fascination of including bags that carry stuff. I don't know who does this. Who travels with their power supply? All, all these like, if you ever buy a really nice power supply, they always come with like purses and stuff for your cords. I've never understood that, but whatever. Um, when it comes to cutting open zip ties and stuff, you probably noticed it earlier, I could have probably used a knife, but it's very, very easy to use a pair of fingernail clippers. Makes things super easy. No time wasted. Oh god, this is so sexy. There's a 1050 watt Seasonic. Um, so somebody in chat is typing in all caps, Corsairs are just rebranded Seasonics idiots. That is not true. Some, some Corsair models, some of them are rebranded Seasonics, but not every Corsair product line, like the CX Builder ones, those are not rebranded Seasonics. Not everything that Corsair sells is a rebranded Seasonic PSU. That's why there are some complaints about some of the lower Corsair uh, power supplies. Most are rebranded. Mo that most doesn't mean anything. You have to know specifically. What, that would be like walking onto a field in Iraq and soldiers going, where, where are the mines at? And you would go, most of the area is clear. And then that's all you have. If you want to know which ones are rebranded Seasonics or not, you have to know the product lines. You can't just say most are rebranded. You have to know which ones they are. Otherwise, you're just shooting in the dark. Okay, um, sorry, this is starting to take too long. I don't want that to fall over. <clears throat> Got our cute little bag. One thousand fifty watts is too much. Um, ordinarily, I'd agree. However, for this system where we're going to be overclocking the CPU and we're cross firing seventy nine seventies, I think ten fifty is good. Um, I. I think I could have scraped by maybe, I think with an 850. Um, I probably could have scraped by with an 850 if I didn't do any overclocking, but that's not ideal. Um, oh, my oh, hey, he's falling. Um, Power supply, there, there, so there's two things going on. One, when you overclock, your system is gonna draw more power than what the parts are rated for, because as part of overclocking, just, uh, parts will draw more power. And two is, as time goes on, um, parts will degrade. Your, your power supply, three years down the line, will not be able to put out as much power as it could when you bought it brand new. So buying a power supply that's, a, that's over what you need is good to some extent. That being said, don't be the don't be that guy that buys an 800 watt power supply for a single GPU build. You don't have to go crazy or whatever. But I think that this power supply at this price um, for this build, I think is a good is a good buy is a necessary buy. Surely a quality power supply won't degrade over the life of the PC? Yes. I, I, every power supply will lose the ability to put out the, the wattage that it was rated for over the course of its life. Um, some people say that Seasonic power supplies are actually rated lower than what they put out, which is good. That means that it puts out more power, or it's capable of drawing more um, wattage than it actually says. But every power supply does degrade over time, even high quality ones do. Get a wattage reader and plug the computer into it. I guarantee you won't draw anywhere near 1,000 watts. I, okay, man. I don't know what you want me to say. 
Um, if you click the link to the part picker build or whatever, the maximum thermal draw or the maximum wattage draw for every part in the system is rated at like 730. That's assuming that the CPU and the GPUs are under load, which is unlikely. But that 730 number will climb as you um, as you start to overclock components, especially when you get into overvolting. Um, like I said, I could have skimped by you. I could have gotten by with an 850 watt power supply, but once you start adding peripherals, once you start adding several hard disk drives, once you add a solid state drive, if you want to add additional cooling, um, it, it, why, why would you why would you get something with a maximum rated draw of like 730 and then get an 850 when you know you're going to be overclocking? And you know you've got to add other drives there. Um, if you wanted to get an 850 and you're saving money, you can, but getting a 1050 just it gives you so much more overhead and it ensures that you're going to have enough power for the life of the system um, and it means that you don't have to worry about plugging in extra peripherals and, and having things just, and, and, and having to worry about not having enough power. Um, I stand by the 1050 in this build. I, 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 if, well, I mean for my own build I got a 1050 and I probably didn't need it. Actually, I definitely didn't need it. I thought I was doing something different with graphics cards, but that's irrelevant. That's a real no. Um, 1050 is good in this build. Okay. Um, power supply is plugged in. Oh. I'm going to plug this power supply into the wall. Supplies plugged in, it's plugged into a grounded outlet, power slice turned on. I know that I can always touch this if I need to ground myself. Um, you should make a habit of making sure that you're grounded while you're doing a build so you don't blow shit up. Although chances are nothing will actually explode. But you get the idea. Okay. <laughs> what did Aslan do? Oh, you don't want to know, dude. <laughs> oh my goodness! He's been pretty terror. <laughs> Well, you gave him all of these boxes to play with. Dude, oh, he like, he knocked he over... He scared you to death. Yeah, because I thought the boxes were just going to fall over. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. Oh. And then he like knocked over. He like took like two boxes down with him back here. <laughs> all right. Um, the next thing that's going in is going to be the motherboard. Um, I'll throw as much into the motherboard as I can before I put it in. Um, some people like to put the cooler in before. Oh, you know what's funny is I actually, I never checked this case to see if it could handle the radiator with this uh, cooler. That's worrisome, but <laughs> well, let's hope for the best. Um, I like to install the motherboard before the aftermarket cooler. Uh, most cases are gonna come with an area in the back. Yeah, like that. And the area in the back where you can work with the uh, mounting plate for the cooler, so. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Um. Why do you need to plug it in? Can't you just neutralize the potential of the case? Holy shit. Okay, like I said, it's been a long time since I've been in a physics class, okay? If you have, if your body is carrying a charge and you touch a case, that case is going to have the charge, or the, the charge will equalize between you and the case. That means that both of you will carry a charge. If you're not touching something that's been grounded, then everything is still gonna have a charge. The idea is you wanna get rid of the charge completely. You don't wanna just equalize it so you have a little bit of a charge. You wanna get rid of it completely, or at least that's the way that I understand it. <clears throat> yeah, the power supply is installed so the case should be grounded, so it should be fine, but. Okay, um, this bag is an electrostatic protection bullshit device. Um, outside of the bag absorbs electrons, absorbs static. Um, inside of the bag does not. 
if you've got a whole bunch of static into this bag and then you set the motherboard on top of the bag, then you just discharge the bag into the motherboard. So don't do that. Some people will take the bag out and then they'll put the motherboard on the bag because they think it's a nice thing to do whatever. Don't do that because all of the static from that is stored on this will go to that. You know? Whoops. What in the... This motherboard is ultra durable because it says it on the motherboard. Uh, I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna pull out these um, things that are in like the HDMI and all that whatever garbage. why but gigabyte likes to pad they like to pad the back of their io panels and that's it's really 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 obnoxious to me um i just tear it off because it, it makes installing the io panel harder I, I don't i honestly have no idea why they put padding on the back of it it's just going to make it obnoxious um when you go to slide the motherboard in. i need to make sure this is not going to fall off So right now, I'm just popping the I.O. panel into the back of the case. Um, this cable is for a fan in the back. Will you test the parts before putting them in the case? So some people like to do what they call um, a test boot, or I guess like an external build first, where they just put plug everything into the motherboard and boot it before they put it in the case. For me personally, um, I, I, um, I don't want to step on any toes. I think that's a waste of time. I've never done that in my life. I guess if you, like, I can troubleshoot everything whether or not it's inside the case or not. I guess if the motherboard was bad, I would have to pull everything out. But I mean, in that case, it's going to be a big pain in the ass no matter what you do. Um, I, I never do that. I never test everything externally first. It's just extra work. And I'm an American. I don't like to work. All right. Okay. What? <clears throat> Um, there should be a box that came with the case. I'm just going to have all of the screws that I need for the motherboard. Oh, yes. And this case actually comes with a speaker, which is something that, for whatever reason, cases don't come with speakers anymore. Um, the little four-pronged speaker that you can plug into the motherboard to get error codes out of. It's nice. It's convenient to have it if you're having trouble booting. Although, actually, I guess these days motherboards just come with panels on them that spit out an error code anyway, so... Where did my screwdriver go? Which is the best GTX graphics card? The one with the highest number? <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, the 780 is the highest numbered one of anyone. It's the best one. I, I don't know how to answer. Is that a trick, quest trick question? You want to know like, what the best price performance one is? Or? There's no reason to ever, or, well, I guess the GTX Titan or the 790 would be better. But... Oh yeah, my cookies, hold on. I got over a hundred billion. I gotta buy the... What? Oh, I'm up to 50 million cookies per second now. What is this? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it? Those aren't real cookies. I can't steal it. It's not real. Okay. Cookie game? My time machines are making over n almost 10 million cookies per second. Yeah, they bring cookies back from the past. Cookies from the past? How does that even work? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, what is this for? Game? It's like 
Have you ever heard of like idle RPG? So you don't even nope. play it? You just nope. watch it? Yep. Wait, are you... It's pretending you're clicking on it? Well, I've got things that are clicking on it, quote-unquote, that are clicking. And you're not really clicking? Nope. Did you have to click at one point? At the very beginning you did, but that's for plebeians. I can't steal it, so it's not real. Alright. Okay, there we go. Sorry. You download a car if you could. Almost. 3D printing. Right now, all I'm doing is screwing in the standoffs on my motherboard. There's a guy named Giggle Putty. He's my new best friend. Um, before putting the motherboard in, I should have installed the CPU and the RAM. I'm not too sure why I didn't. It's not a big deal, but... Right now, all I'm doing is I'm going around and I'm dropping screws in the uh, holes. Um, again, like I said, nice thing about this case is it actually comes with the standoffs already screwed in. To be honest, I'm actually surprised that most cases don't. Um, when you talk about all the ways that you could fuck up a computer build, that's probably the easiest way to do it, is to forget to put standoffs in. I'm surprised that most cases don't have the standoffs pre-screwed in. Do you have a Beats by Dre sound card? I don't know. How hot does my CPU have to be before I can start using it to boil eggs? Um, I don't know, what is boiling temps? I don't know my Celsius to Fahrenheit too well. With a shitty $60 case? This case isn't bad. This case is fine. It's got the uh, hot swappable hard disk drive bay, which is what I really wanted out of it. And the cooling and everything is fine, and it's got plenty of space. My only worry is that I'm not going to be able to get the radiator in here, which is something I didn't look at at all when I bought this case. I'm not sure why I didn't look at that at all, but we'll see how that goes. What's the point of getting higher and higher end graphics cards when you have a GPU that can already run games at max settings? Um, it's running games at higher resolutions at max settings that starts to get difficult. When you get into tri-monitor setups, or when you get into 4K resolution stuff, that's where you start to look into the more extravagant graphics card setups. Um. I'm getting my CPU out, the one that we deleted earlier. Um, I, I guess you can't really see any of this. I'm just lifting the latch, putting the CPU in. It doesn't matter if you put the IHS back on exactly straight, it's not that important. I'll lower the hammer. 
Always keep this piece, this thing that comes out of the motherboard, you always want to keep that in case you have to RMA the board, you need to ship it with us, otherwise they won't take it. <clears throat> Got our crucial ballistics RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the RAM in. cooler on, I'm going to connect the power supply to the motherboard. There's typically two cables that you're concerned with. You're going to have this guy that everybody should be familiar with. Oh my god. Um, your 24 pin big daddy Huge dick cord. Is it alright if you use something other than a block of wood to delid? Um, yeah, I prefer wood. You, it ha if you're gonna use wood to delid, it has to be hard. It has to be very hard wood. Um, the first wood that I tried delitting with was yeah, delitting with was way too soft, and it ended up that the wood would just break before it would actually take the lid off the processor. So I had to go back to um, Home Depot. Oh god, what a nightmare. They make you cut the wood yourself. It's the most I've worked in years. Um, I had to cut off a piece of some kind of oak wood. And that was the shit. Whatever I'm using right now, I think it's like red oak or hard oak or something. I don't know, something like that. Um, but it's awesome. That's the kind of stuff you want to use. I didn't feed him dinner, but cool. what happened? You. Oh, um, he still had most of his lunch left. I know he's not eating. Yeah, or breakfast or whatever. So I saw him starting to eat that for dinner. The 24 pin is the big one, and then there is the 8 pin. Um, that's PCI Express. PCI Express is for graphics cards. This is labeled CPU. Um, there, you'll, you'll either get a 4 plus 4 pin, or two 8 pins, or two 4 pins, or a 4 pin and an 8 pin, whatever. Um, what, what, depending on the motherboard, sometimes it'll only take a 4, sometimes it'll take an 8. Um, some might need more, I guess. I don't know, I've never run into those before. Um, <clears throat> I'm really scared that the cooler is not going to fit at all in this case, <laughs> but I'll look at that in a second, I guess.
Alright, so... It's kind of hard to see, the lighting is kind of bad. Um, big 24 pin cord went through this grommet right here, right? Out the back, and then it came down here, plugged into the power supply, and then there's an 8 pin that ran through here in the back, 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 and then it came out up here, this little thing, and it's plugged in up here to the motherboard. Is it safe to put the PC together with a cat around you? Yeah, it's fine. Shouldn't do anything bad. <laughs> Unless you want us to run up and start eating hearts, I guess, but... Um, we could theoretically test boot this system without um without a cooler on, although that kind of shit makes me nervous. Um, although I guess it shouldn't because I had to do that with mine for a long time. Fuck, fucking Swift Tech. But um, oh. before we put the cooler in, we're gonna connect the headers on the motherboard. Um, like I said, the reason why I like to put in the motherboard and the power supply first is I like to connect as many things as possible before you start adding more components. Um, some people will plug everything in and then start, well, they'll, they'll, like, they'll put all the parts in and then they'll start connecting things and that can turn into a huge headache. You don't want to be trying to plug in headers while you're maneuvering around like a cooler and a graphics card and all these cables and everything. I just like to plug things in as I install them. Um, I, I feel like everything is much, much, much simpler if you do it that way. Know what I'm saying? My headers are gonna pop out down here. boards are so nice. The gigabyte way of labeling the, um, the gigabyte way of labeling the headers makes things so much easier to figure out than how some people go about labeling or not labeling at all. Some motherboards don't label jack shit and you've got to read the manual to figure it out. Those are the best. So the headers that you connect for the case are the things that you've got the light that flashes whenever your hard disk or solid state drive are loading data. You've got the reset switch that resets your system. You've got the power switch that turns it on and turns it off. And then you've got the um, power LED, which makes the light turn on, I guess. Um, yeah. Did I miss anything? I think that's, a, that's all I plugged in at least. Go ahead and put the speaker in, because why the fuck not? <sighs> okay, headers are connected. Power to the motherboard. We've got a RAM in, we've got a CPU in. Now the big question of whether or not this radiator will actually fit in this case. I can't believe I didn't look at this at all. I didn't look at this at all before I ordered this. I only got this case because I was excited about the um, the hot swappable hard disk drive bay because it fits perfectly what Shannon wanted. Radiator. The whole purpose of the existence of a radiator is to cre increase the total surface area of hot shit so that there's more fucking space for it to be sucked away by the air, to disperse into the air, for the fans to move air through the fins to get whatever. Um, you've got tubes that help your water exist, I guess. The tubes don't really do anything. Um, here is the block that sits on your CPU. Typically, these are copper because copper is very fucking good at being conducive to heat. Um, You've got the block, um, and the block also has the pump here. What the pump does is the pump moves water from on top of the hot block. You've got, a, you've got a copper block that sits on the CPU. 
CPU produces heat, the copper block gets hot, and then you've got water that runs over that block that carries the heat through the tubes into the radiator, where it goes through all the radiator, you've got all that surface area, you've got fans blowing air through it, and then the water hopefully returns through the other tube a little bit cooler than it went in because of all the dispersion of heat, blah, 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 blah. And that's how the radiator pump bullshit works, right? Right? Okay. Um, will it blend? Will it blend? That's the question, right? I have no idea. I have absolutely yes, no idea. Will. We're gonna find out. We don't have a blend tech blender. Take the top off case. I'm not seeing holes for a radiator, which is scary. I don't see holes anywhere for a radiator. Uh oh. At the moment, I'm about 83% sure that this is not going to work. I wonder if the um, I wonder if the case came with any kind of mounting brackets. Fails, read the manual. Two hundred forty millimeter radiator insulation. Please don't say extra parts required. Please don't say extra parts required. Page twenty one. Remove the top bullshit, fix the 200 with screws. <laughs> There's no holes. <laughs> what? Make some. Do you have a drill? No. Oh. Use your mind. Use this knife. Use this screwdriver. <gasps> oh, shit. Never mind. I think it'll work. Oh, this case is like on the next level. <gasps> this case is full of surprises. However, I'm very sad about losing this fan. Hold on, you gotta see how ridiculous this fucking fan looks. Um, actually, I won't even unplug it for now. I'll just leave it off to the side. The amount of shiny lights in this case is, is incredibly humorous. I think that would work. To drill? I don't. <laughs> you don't work tomorrow, do you? What time is it? Not that close. It's in two and a half hours. Can you? How, how fast have you gotten this? I don't know. Will, will it blend? Yes, it'll blend. Did you see him blend the Old Spice bottle? I've never even watched that, that guy before, but I've heard, the, before? I've heard the Will It Blend so many times, but I've never actually seen any videos. Why not? That's blasphemous. We're going to have to fix that. I could just try to turn this on. How are your cookies? Can I see the cookies? Yeah. How much are we up to? 20 billion cookies. They're pumping. Um, throw me up some time machines. Throw me up How some many? time machines. How many time machines? Shh, just click it until you can't. Yeah, more. Oh, nice. <laughs> cookies from the past. Yep, that have not been eaten. Okay. What? But then aren't they stale? No. Why wouldn't people eat it them? It goes back into the past and gets them right when... They're made? Yeah. But then... Those people will never enjoy cookies, and then they'll never want to. They, they weren't going to eat them anyway, though. They weren't going to eat them. No, they weren't ever going to eat the them. Joy of cookies. How do you know they weren't going to eat them? They probably weren't about, until you stole no, them. No, think about time yes. travel. No, no, no. Think about it. You go back into the past ten minutes, and you see that there are ten cookies on the tray. So you know that an hour ago, when they made thirty cookies, ten of those cookies were never going to be eaten. So then you go back into the past thirty minutes, you take ten cookies, and they were never going to eat them anyway because you already verified it in the future, right? But then you've split the timeline. And then somebody That's not how the timeline works. It, That's not how the timeline the works in the cookie want, verse, dude. And they want those cookies and then they're gone. Nope. And then they file a lawsuit because you stole their cookies. I'll never know, dude. Um So it says that the radiator the cookie verse. <laughs> Uh, 
I like to attach the radiator before the um, radiator block, before the CPU block, because I think it's easier to do it that way, so. Oh my gosh, you're stealing all the cookies that Santa was going to eat. That dude's fat as fuck, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> isn't that where he gets his joy from or something, though? Not anymore. I thought the cookies were like a bribe. Okay, so that... For his diabetes? This is not possible. <laughs> that guy's got 26 billion cookies. How come you don't have that many cookies? Look. That's probably like the first time he's gotten to 26 billion. I've been past that, dude. I've made trillions of cookies. Well, maybe I don't know. <laughs> You're not really making them. I thought you said you were stealing them. That's not the same as making them. How are you selling this many cookies? Do people really want to eat this many cookies? Yeah, dude. How many people are in the world? Enough to consume. I don't think everybody wants that many cookies. You're you're saturating the supply. You're oversaturating it. Demand is gonna drop off. You're gonna go bankrupt. Nobody's gonna want cookies anymore. Shoot. Did you know some people don't like chocolate? Do you have any non chocolate cookies? It looks like they all have chocolate chips. Nope. There's macadamia. Or, yeah, there's macadamia nuts. I don't see any. All I see is chocolate chips. They solved world hunger. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry. This is awkward, but this will work. <laughs> Probably not. You make the dog by saying jiggly monkey without a space. How many time machines do you have in the system? 30? Yes, 30. Okay, so. There, that goes there, that goes there. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're making my jiggly monkeys. Oh, yes. I think we should put the radiator. <laughs> Anti cookies, you know, scum. Chatless productive. Uh oh. Wasn't very productive in the first place. Oh. They were asking nice questions though, no? Is Eggman still here? Amon21 asks, is this your job or a side thing? Um, both. It's a side thing that I do as a job. That's not my primary source of income, if that's what you're asking. J.F. J says, please acknowledge me. Acknowledge. Okay, 
Jacob put he put the dollar sign on the wrong side of his numbers so he doesn't get his question asked. Ouch. Did you guys see that we got the word literally to no longer mean literally? <laughs> Tell the girl to be quiet. Bam. Oh man, this is hella weird. <laughs> Are those pajama pants or swim trunks? They're shorts. Will this be able to run Minecraft on low? Nothing can run Minecraft. What is what? Your opinion of fractal cases. They're really good. I said that earlier, didn't I? Fractal cases are really good. Can you build a computer that runs most games seamlessly at 60 FPS for under a thousand dollars? For under a thousand? Definitely. Um, you could easily squeeze a GTX 770 or a 7970 gigahertz edition out of that budget. And both of those cards will destroy most games at a 1080p. When I say destroy, I mean run at 60 FPS without a problem. Do you ship overseas? I can ship overseas, but you don't want me to ship overseas because it's way too expensive. Radiator is necessary to help the water pump, keep the water cool. If you're asking me if the water cooler is necessary, um, not necessary, but helpful in getting this processor to be as cool as possible, considering that we would like to overclock it as much as possible. How often do you clean the inside of your computer? I never clean the inside of my computer. Um, some people recommend doing it once a month or once every other month. If you want to take an uh, air duster to it and go and just air dust it out, you can do that. That's fun. But, um, I mean, I never do it. I don't give a fuck. I'm badass like that. Will you ever love me again? That was Eggman. I don't know, man. Someday. The wounds will heal. Why do I hate Eggman? Am I supposed to hate Eggman? <laughs> I don't think so. Oh. Did he do something? <laughs> I don't know. I think you just feel scorned. My broadband is bad, but only on my computer. When somebody else brings their computer, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, if you're having trouble like that, then either you're connecting to it wirelessly. That's like some weird shit, bro, huh? That should never happen. There's some weird shit going on there. I would recommend throwing away your computer and setting your house on fire. I'm just kidding. I don't know. That's like weird shit. If that's really ha- uh. Watched it, but I've read uh, two of the books. You blocked Eggman on Skype. That's why he's here. 
Oh, well, rip and paste, bitch. <laughs> Why did I block one? You have, you have, you have 20 billion cookies. Throw up another time machine. Oh, I probably blocked on Skype because you called me that one day and you were drunk or whatever. It's fucking annoying to me. I'm sorry. Get wrecked. <laughs> Will you twerk for money? If you guys can donate a thousand dollars to me in the next ten minutes, I'll twerk. One <laughs> click, clean the Jeff's wings. Oh, the armadillo. Oh. But they're tagged, so I can't discriminate. Um. Some people, okay, so there have been all these tests done on like a spread of like 50 different uh, TIMs, thermal interface materials. Um, you guys call it thermal paste. Um, a lot of people use different thermal paste. To be honest, it's all the same. Like the, the spread on like, on like 50 different thermal interface materials was like five degrees between the absolute best and the absolute worst. Um, most of the time you're, you're fine using whatever bullshit it came with. And in, in, in you, you'll be fine. You don't have to buy like the arc light, uh, kryptonite, sir, thermal silver compound or whatever. That's you don't like any of that stuff. You're fine using whatever it came with. I promise. Five degrees is a lot, no? Um, five degrees difference between the absolute best and the absolute worst. So any decent thermal interface material is going to be like within the margin of error difference between one or the other. smoke weed every day. Every day. Does this mean you're a whore? Sure, I mean, I entertain you for money. I, no? What is your opinion on Hearthstone, and do you think it would be an ignored piece of shit if it wasn't Blizzard? Obviously, Blizzard's name is going to carry a lot of weight, so it's impossible to say how popular it would be without Blizzard backing it. Um, that being said, it seems like a lot of people are having fun with it. I haven't looked into the game deep enough yet to know whether or not I personally would enjoy it, but it seems like a lot of people cool. like it. I feel like I should shut this off first. Right now, I'm putting on the back plate. Did you go today? Yeah. Can you get your button for the gate? Not yet, I said I'll have it tomorrow. Oh. Um, I don't know, when I feel like I look cool. When I can, in a month. How about that? I don't know. We'll see when I feel like it. Where do you get most of your parts? Um, I use PC Part Picker and whatever it says is the cheapest is where I get parts from. I have no preference whether it's Newegg, Amazon, or whatever. Fuck. Can you show us your feet, please, Kitty? No. Do you have an opinion on new tropics or smart drugs? I think they're all really dumb. Um, there's never been like any conclusive research on any of that, has there? I haven't ever seen any. Um. I don't know. I think most of that shit is placebo. Most, um, in my opinion, most nootropics are the same as, uh, Shaq's secret stuff, if you've ever seen Space Jam. But that's just my uninformed and uneducated opinion. Not entirely sure. Or Honey Boo Boo's Super Juice? Sure. <laughs> How much do 
much can you bench, bro? Not much. I hate you, Steven. I need to be up in five hours for work, and all I can do is collect fucking cookies. Dude, you can collect cookies when you sleep. There's not an IHOP near here, there's a Denny's. I'm sure there's an IHOP somewhere, I just don't know where. What's your favorite movie? Um, there's an IHOP here. I remember driving by one when I was lost. Do you think they'd be better than Denny's? Um... IHOP has better sausage than Denny's, doesn't it? Denny's discontinued chocolate chips. Yeah, actually, that, fuck that. Fuck Denny's. They got rid of chocolate chips. The last time I went, she said it was the last time they were going to have them. Opinion on Miley Cyrus at the MMVAs. Dude, pop culture has always been over the top and ridiculous. I don't know why anybody fucking cares, but... I don't know, man. Do you have a favorite movie? I like, um... Anything with Denzel Washington? Sure. <laughs> Pan's Labyrinth is probably my favorite movie. Uh, by the Del Toro dude. Training days, so I think he likes it quite a bit. Training days, sick. I'm not doing this right. I don't think I did this right. No, I must. No, there's no way. Hold on, I gotta look this up. Uh oh. Are you asking for directions? Okay. 11:55. Yeah, no, never mind. That should be right. What's the most expensive build you've ever done? Probably my own. How much was it? Um, why doesn't it feel right? Oh, wait. <gasps> oh, I understand. Oh, never mind. It's right, right? Yeah, it's right. Never mind. Okay. Why do they give you washers? Where do the washers go? These washers? Yeah. It's not listed. I found anymore. two. Oh, for the top. What do you think? There's three. Oh, there's the other one. Are you a contrarian? The fuck is contrarian? So who is contrarian? Contrary to what? <laughs> Waffles or pancakes? Um, I don't know. Waffles are actually really good. I haven't had waffles in a long time, though. Usually gets French toast. So neither? Do you use the stock fans on your PC? Um, no. If you're going to overclock, you need an aftermarket cooler. enough of Led Zeppelin to have an opinion. Of what I've heard, it's pretty meh. I don't know. Squirtle or Charmander? Um, Squirtle? In the game? Uh, or the card game? Um, Blastoise was always better than Charmander. Blastoise is In the card evolution. game. 
Yeah, but you gotta think Charmander in the future. Charizard. Charizard, so Charizard sucked. Charizard or Blastoise? Charizard sucked. Charizard, you had to burn like two energy cards just to use his attack. And in the video game, Charizard was a flying and a fire, so his special bullshit got cut in half, so he sucked. And lightning Pokemon raped his shit. Pretty sure Blastoise was better, like, in every respect. Plus, Blastoise can surf. Um, for customers, I usually just ship them and hope for the best for my own. Um, I usually do, I'm just kidding. Um, I'll do, uh, oh god, what's it called? I forgot. Oh, um, I'll do Intel burn test for, I'll, I'll do like 10 to 20 passes of Intel burn test just to make sure the temperature is okay. And then after that, I'll run Prime 95 for several hours, anywhere from four to eight hours, depending on my mood. Um, Intel burn test is the temperature check, and Prime 95 is to make sure that the voltage is such that the chip is stable. CPU fan. Are you trying to get into the LCS? Sure, if I can play at that level someday. Seed box for what CD? No, seed boxes are for idiots. You don't need a seed box to have a good ratio. Even with a, sh even with a mediocre to shitty internet connection, as long as you never delete anything you download and you constantly seed your files, you will never have a problem on any private, on any private site that I've ever been to in my entire life. Um, Oink, Waffles, um, IP torrents. I don't know, man. I've been Bit Soup, Demonoid. Uh, those don't really count, I guess. Um, as long as you're not retarded and you just don't delete your torrents, then you'll never, ever, ever have problems, even on private trackers. Also, make sure you only download music that you already legally own first. I charge 15% of the cost of parts, and that includes all the labor, and then I charge packaging and shipping, which is however much FedEx charges for packaging and shipping. <sighs> all right. I'm going to... Because if you delete your torrents, you're not seeding them anymore, which means you're not getting credit for them. Keeps your ratio up, bro. Check your PayPal donations to see if you have $1,000 yet. I didn't even post my PayPal, I don't think. They were advertising it. They want to see you twerk. <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> What's your opinion on Canada? Canada, awesome. What? <laughs> what am I supposed to say? I don't know. 15% <laughs> is expensive? No, I don't think so. I have gotten $1 in donations, so wait, $2, $3, $8. I have $8 so far. Rip in peace. No twerking. Get fucked. Okay, I'm going to connect a SATA cable so that I can give power to the pump.
What would you do? What would you study if you went back to college? I have no clue. Maybe something with computers? I don't, know, I don't even know. Okay. We have the radiator, the fans, we've got power to the motherboard. Um, in a perfect world, I should be able to get a picture out of the monitor that says everything is A-OK. -okay. That means that all the parts that I have connected are working, and that's usually a good thing. <laughs> Sorry, it's really hard to show the radiator installation. I need to get like a different camera or something for that. I don't know. You could get a multi-camera setup like uh, Lethal Frag has for his cooking days. Maybe. And then also maybe you can see the ridiculousness that is this fan back here. Oh. Um. Did you finish high school? Yeah. Damn, those fans are loud as fuck. They're out of tune. Can you tune them? That one beep usually means that I don't like the dissonance. everything is good to go. I need to plug this monitor in. I'm gonna plug it in. We're fine. He's getting 21 million cookies a second. Do you want more time machines? Uh, okay, sorry. So that should mean everything is fine. It just says no boot, no bootable device is selected. Um, I'm assuming that if I throw a keyboard on it and I hit enter and I look at the BIOS, I should see all of the RAM. This bias so tr pretty. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, wow, it's got holy fuck! It's got a calendar and everything. Aww, it's so pretty. Um, I've never seen. I've never. I guess I've never used this before. This board before. I see like all the stats. What the fuck? Why do you need such a computer only to play League of Legends? I like to play other games besides League of Legends, and this computer's not for me. Costa Rica and eight US dollars is four thousand and thirty-six dollars. Please twerk for me four times. <laughs> oh maybe system status? How do I get over to system status? Someone else's stream said you were going to twerk on stream, so they came over. What? <laughs> no. Well, that's one of my backup monitors, not his monitors. He has two View Sonics. What's something you're capable of cooking from scratch? Eggs. <laughs> Will you be my new dad? Sure. Dude, I'm so mad right now. I don't understand. Um, I'm going to assume that everything's working. Oh, I guess I'll know more once I load into the operating system. I can't see it. How, like if it can detect how much RAM it needs to detect. It should see uh, 16 gigs, but I have no idea how to check. Memory performance. 
says it's at 1333 megahertz. Is that really what this RAM is clocked at? Can you give me the RAM package out of there? <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. It's okay. It's not listed. Can somebody click the PC part picker? Is this RAM supposed to be clocked at 1333? Why don't you read the RAM? <laughs> Can you? Yeah. You need drivers to run 1600? Oh, okay. All right, whatever. I'm assuming everything works. I'll know more when I boot into the operating system. It looks like everything works. It booted. What is your opinion on IPS monitors? Um, they're cool, I guess. Just make sure you look at one before you spend a fuck ton of money on it. Unique articles of clothing, because I don't buy clothes. Can confirm. Clothes have holes in them. How many concurrent push ups can you do now? I have no clue. I haven't tried in a while. How much can you press? Not much. I hate Molex power connectors. Alright. Um. I don't know what big means. Is that height? People <laughs> say how big are you? Like, oh, look, it's so pretty. These, the LEDs that come with the system are, like, ridiculous. Here, too. You can set, um... You can do like different things with it. Different settings? Yeah. It's like Christmas. You can make it red and green for Christmas and then. You like can just blue switch between like individual colors. He's 5'7. Five, 5'7 seven. Five, seven and a half. <laughs> okay. And then it does like rainbow mode. And then it has like this mode. <laughs> And then you can turn them off. I think that cases like that are very funny. It's very funny to me. When's the last time you shaved off all your facial hair? I don't know, it's been a long time. Um, it didn't list temperatures in the BIOS either. What the fuck? What did I do with the keyboard? Holy crap. Fair enough. Um, checking the temperatures after you boot it into the BIOS is very important because I need to make sure that I didn't mess anything up when I did the D-Lib. And if the temperatures are absurdly high here, then it would be a good indicator that something is wrong. Why does it not lit? Oh, okay, this file, I don't like this BIOS. Generally, when you log into a BIOS, it shows like the PC health, all of the information right there, and I'm not seeing any of it. When is your sponsor's keyboard coming out? Uh, hopefully soon. Okay, so the CPU right now is at 29 degrees. Oh, and it does detect both RAM. It just doesn't tell me the size of them. I does see both of them. Oh my god, I wish... I wish I would have got this H100i over the cooler of the nightmare. The monster. I fell for the hype and I got the, um, I went with the H220, and this is my third H220, because I had to RMA the first two, and even this one is obnoxiously loud. Uh, this H100 is really nice, I'll show it to you when I finish. Are you growing an afro? An afro? No. I don't think so. Um, I'll show you the inside of this in a second, sorry. Seven, Eggman, and a half. Have you 
told your parents that you're gay? Not yet. I don't know how my mom will feel. She's a very strict Christian. You email him, Banna. Somebody typed in his email. I told my parents I'm gay. Yes. <laughs> On a scale of one to Reggie, how good are you in bed? What is, is that a sex joke on Reggie? <laughs> I don't know. Will you play GTA 5 when it comes out? It's coming out on PC, so probably. That's a big game that I have to play. Do you want to play the first, like, four of them? I have all those. You can yeah, play. Take a long time to do them though. I thought that, the, dude, those games were so much fun. Those top-down yeah. Grand Theft Autos. Not that the new ones aren't fun, all of the Grand Theft Autos have been consistently amazing, in my opinion. was your tag team partner versus Razor Raymond and The Undertaker, what would your name and finishing move be? I have no idea. see anything I'm doing? Not at all. There's not much to see. Oh, da -da 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 -da. Are you going to play Metal, Metal Gear Solid 5? I have to. Maybe. Actually, no, I won't. If it's on PC, I definitely will. But if it's a PS4 exclusive, I don't think I can justify buying an entire system. Although I was really close to buying a PS3 just for Metal Gear Solid um, 4. Can I get lessons in StarCraft? You're gonna pay me a hundred an hour, sure thing. He has 27 billion cookies. Where's my flashlight? My magla? I didn't set the camera there, sorry, we're going. Now I'm just continuing to connect all of the headers on the motherboard. Um, I guess since you're down here.
dun 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 dun. I just have two. Oh, state of things to plug in. What's your favorite book? Um. I don't know. The those vampire chronicle books are really good. The vampire diaries. What's like the interview with the vampire? The vampire chronicles. I don't know what they're called. Those are really good. Okay, holy shit. Um, gotta plug in this fan somewhere. Would you 1v1 me in Minecraft? No. Did you plug in the front panel thingy? I think I've plugged in all the front panel things. Or at least they should be. He's a name fag on 4chan. How else are they gonna know it's Destiny? See. I'm with you. ID heaven. <laughs> Alright, um, uh, this looks kind of ugly. There's not much I can do about that thing. Is there ever a reason to buy a Blu ray disc player for your computer? If you want to read Blu ray discs? <laughs> Otherwise, chances are, if you're, if you're asking me that, then the answer is no. Um, Blu-ray's not really catching on. It's never going to. Um, well, that's not asking true. I'm sorry. I, it's, I guess it's popular with consoles. Is that a USB 3.0 there as well? I have USB 3.0 here and here. That's interesting. Okay, I think everything is connected in the back. Um... Oh, I guess if you want to see how the inside looks. I like the way that the inside looks. I think it's really nice. I really like these H100i coolers. Do you want the camera? What? Do you want to hold the camera to show them? No. I like the soft... It's kind of hard to tell on the stream, but this blue is like a really soft blue. It's really nice. Um... Not, uh, not to my knowledge. I have the fans on the radiator pointing up so that the air is coming through. It's being sucked out from the case and it's going out of the case, so it's like a vent, I guess. Um, this fan is blowing outwards as well. Pretty standard shit. I think, um, almost got everything. So typically at this point I would install the graphics cards for per peripherals. However, um, um, yeah. Oh, since this is gonna be a crossfire build, I don't wanna try to fuck around with SATA cables and shit inside of a case with that much hardware. So I'm probably just going to be, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna install this stuff first, right? Yeah, right. Okay. See if Aslan would fit inside the computer for science. <laughs> Unfortunately, Aslan is the harbinger of great static forces. <laughs> I don't think I would want him inside of this case. Is 
this guy's grandma just came into the room and gave him a hug. Are you jelly? Sure. Not really. My grandma's pretty dead. I don't think I would want any hugs from her. <laughs> Fine, pretty dead. I don't it's like. Dead. I'm sure that parts of her body could still be recovered, but for the majority of it, actually, no. I think she got cremated, so she's pretty dead. What video cards are you going to be putting in? Crossfire seventy nine seventies. Um, I know how to play chess, but I don't know any, like, build orders or anything like that. Build orders. I like your verbiage. What drivers do you download when you boot your PC for the first time? Um, all I get are the Ethernet, the LAN drivers, and then that's it. Um, uh, graphics card drivers and LAN drivers are usually all I ever bother getting. sets itself to 100% speed on boot, no matter what. If I change the speed of my BIOS, then my PC won't recognize my GPU. <laughs> what? You've got some fucked up shit going on, little nigga. I can't help you. <laughs> I can't help you, buddy. Mm. I don't know what... That's your love, Eggman. I don't know what your problem is. I'm sorry. You said he couldn't get up there. He has more trouble getting up there. I didn't say he couldn't. Mm -hmm. The table's to make it easier so he doesn't hurt his joints. He's got to exercise this. get the PC with two GBs of RAM or four GBs? Both are bad. You should be running at least eight gigs of RAM. Unless you're building a computer exclusively for gaming and you don't plan on running like Skype or anything in the background or YouTube or Reddit or anything. What power supply are you using and your cable management is awesome? Um, it's a 1050, uh, Watt Seasonic power supply. And say thank you. <sighs> thank you. Oh, 
Oh, a lot of the cords coming off this course are really short, which makes it hard to route them behind the motherboard, which is a little bit annoying. Such is life. Um, I'm going to change where this USB 3.0 goes. Do you recommend a certain brand of RAM? Uh, yeah, whatever brand is the cheapest is what I recommend. How long have you been building PCs? Damn. Uh, fuck. I want to put, I would like to put the USB 3.0 here, but, um, the graphics card is going to fuck it up. There's no way that that'll fit. I'll have to remove it, so it's going back down here. Um, for the most part, cables are as much out of the way as they can be. There's not much else I think I can do in terms of moving shit without... What happened to the music experiment you were trying to do? Um, I should post the winner and then post the next clip. There's no reason why I can't do that. I'll probably do that this weekend. What's your favorite fancy restaurant? Does the Outback Steakhouse count? Any yeah, place where I can get good meat is... The Outback closes in an hour and 36 minutes, by the way. Alright, I'm almost done. I'll be done with this. Um... Okay. Um... PCI Express... Times 16 and times 8, so this is gonna run in... You have to be careful not to put them in the two times eight or like a times eight and a times four slot. I know this one can run at 16 and this one will run at times eight. I think when I put them in cross spiral, they'll run at times eight times eight. I think that's what the Haswell specs are. I could be wrong, but. Too bright, too bright. I need a diffuser. How about a dissipator? I don't know what these graphics cards are called. Storm Chaser Mark 1, I think. It should be listed on the PC Part Picker. <sighs> Here's our beautiful GPU. Can I show them the GPU? If you wanted to, you could independently test each GPU. Um, I'm not, or I'm confident in my ability to troubleshoot if I have issues, so I don't really care to test them individually. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run all of my cables. Guys, planning, like, it sounds stupid, but the hardest part about putting together a computer is when you've already put in a part and you've got to route a cable afterwards and it's not gonna fit, because I don't know if it's like the human's condition or what, but you will try to do everything you can in terms of moving that cable around instead of actually taking the part out. Um, and it's gonna cause a fuck ton of hassle and you're gonna get angry and upset. You might break things, you might kill yourself, you might hurt <laughs> loved ones around you. I don't know, like lots of bad shit can happen. Don't so. worry, Haslund stands up for himself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just route these cables right now so that they're all set and ready to go. I 
on the break. <laughs> what? Nothing. I just showed them your feet. I asked. Oh, don't do computer builds and socks. <laughs> don't be like me. I keep grounding myself on this power supply, so I know I'm not going to break anything, but I feel super paranoid. Asim's only allowed to keep one box per room. Because otherwise he starts collecting too many. He gets one for the bedroom and one for the living room. Okay, so I have all of my power cables Pockets. right here. So now when I hook these graphics cards in, all I have to do is just bring the power cables around and plug them in. So routing the cables is getting the hard part out of the way. Installation of the GPU should be very, very, very easy. It just pops in. Fuck! It's not enough. Extra length. Extra cord. <laughs> oh, never mind. We got it. Sick. You can bend wires all you want, as long as you don't crimp the wire. It's going to carry the same amount of whatever it was carrying before. Crimping a wire involves um, bending a wire very, very sharply, such that it does bad things uh, to the inside of a wire. <coughs> what the fuck? What? This one didn't come with a thing. Are you sure? I think it's still on. sure it's not used? I don't know. I mean, I don't think they would sell you a refurb without you explicitly purchasing a refurb. They're not supposed to. Fuck, I hate these 6 plus 2 connectors. Instead of just making an 8 pin, they, it's like 6 plus 2, so the 2 on the side can like fall off. Not to mention, I'm already like super cramped for space. Are they sufficient? 
sufficiently cooled if you put them that close together? They should be. You better hope that the cooling system on each does their job. Um, unfortunately, when you get into SLI and cross pipe setups, there's not much of another option. Some people will remove the heat sinks and they'll put custom water blocks on the shit. Oh, I can't look right. Fuck that. Um, <laughs> and that's the only way. You're supposed to look at them. Why does it say Ghost Recon? Maybe you got a coupon for the... That doesn't say Ghost Recon. That says Ghost Thermal Technology. Oh, my bad. I added... I accidentally some words. <laughs> Um, and again, if I was being responsible, I would probably test these before screwing them in. Oh my god. However, I'm putting... Hey, do you not need a bridge for crossfired cards? I know that for SLI, it's, you need a bridge. Maybe for crossfire you don't? Where does the, um, where does the bridge even connect? Oh, it, right here, obviously. Never mind. I'm, never mind. I was being stupid. I see where it goes. probably technologically possible to include it, they just don't, because it would increase the cost of every motherboard. Why 279.70 instead of 179.90? Because those cards are gimmicky as fuck. I'm not a big fan of... I'm not a fan of dual GPU single card solutions. None. This guy didn't buy any storage, so he's going to be using whatever he's got. Wow, what the fuck? There you go. You're never supposed to over- you're never supposed to super tighten a screw until you have all the screws in. I just did that there. I just did that there, and I paid for it. Valuable seconds of my life that I will never get back trying to make a screw fit that was never going to fit because I tightened one before I put in the other. Oh, okay. Theoretically, everything should be good to go. Um, I have, I'm not gonna lie, I have no idea how crossfire setups work. Oh, I need to connect the bridge, too. Um, I think I should be able to plug this into any monitor and have it work, but I guess we'll see. Oh. Um, usually, oh, what's this shit? Oh, for support. Usually every graphics card comes with a crossfire bridge. Do I put on both? Do you think I need both bridges or just one? Any clue? Just one. All right, looks good to me. Okay. All the fans are spinning.
motherboard says everything is okay, which is good. The mic is right by a fan, sorry. See? However, I'm not getting a picture out of any of the GPUs. I'm not getting a picture of anything. No picture on the motherboard slot either, I don't think. No. When all those fails, turn it off, turn it on again. Hope for the best. But if you boot the system once with the motherboard graphics and then you boot it again with the graphics card, sometimes you've got to boot it, you've got to reboot it afterwards for it to detect everything. I, I have no idea why it works that way, but I'm sure somebody can explain it better than I. check with this fucked up BIOS, if it can detect all of the cards. It detects PCI slot 1, 2, 3, and then PCI, and then IGFX is probably integrated graphics. rollover it means that you can push uh, like more than 11 keys at once on your keyboard or something I don't know That is six key rollover. Oh, whatever, my bad. Um, some people will say that you need good cable management for good airflow, that's bullshit. As long as you have, um, as long as it's not like a jungle, like ridiculous, you should be fine. Um, good cable management is typically just for looks, it makes it look nicer, in my opinion, or in everybody's opinion.
All right, well, I mean, it looks like everything is good, I guess. Um, I'll have to install an operating system on a hard disk drive, and then that's where all of the overclocking and everything begins. That's where I make sure everything is really good. Oh, shit. Can you see the final product? Um, it's loud as fuck when it boots on because all the fans are running at max speed, but once the BIOS kicks in and it uh, spins the fans down because it doesn't need to be that loud, then everything's fine. Um, you can't really see that well, but you've got both graphics cards in. The cooler is running fine. Um, I just use a stock keyboard for testing. Um, I mean, everything should be fine. Um, I'll post some pictures of this when I finish it, and I'll do a little write-up at the end. But... Um, it seems like everything's good. Every part works. I'm happy for that. Hopefully the crossfire and shit works. Um, that'll be fun to play with. Um, there's no hard disk drive in this build. Um, he's got the hard disk drive at home. I'll have to use one of my own to install operating system and test stuff on. <coughs> I'm trying to move to a 47. Um, or, well, hold on. Okay. Um, if I post this to YouTube, I guess, thank you for joining me. I love you very much. I will see you later with whatever other systems I build. I should post more to this channel. <laughs>